Well, a good morning, everybody, and welcome to this webinar, which is one of the first events of uh, Digital AMA 2020. The title is um, Innovative Technologies um, and Agricultural Machinery, the Winning Choices for Young Entrepreneurs, the EU Green Deal. It's organized by the Association of Young uh, Agricultural Entrepreneurs, AGA, and it's organized with the cooperation of Feder Unacom within the activities of people. Most of this small event will be in English, partly in Italian, with the welcome address by Stefano Francia. I'll introduce Good you. morning to everybody. Thank you. Welcome on this uh, online event. Mechanization and European Green Deal, Prospects and the Winning Choices for Young Farmers, organized by AGIA, Young Farmers Association of CIA, Italian Farmers, Agricoltori Italiani, and in cooperation with Federuna Coma. In this hour, we try to explore together the challenges <clears throat> and the opportunities of the huge European program called Green Deal. The speakers that accept to be part of this event are coming from different EU farming situations and we are proud to host them. We start with a general picture of uh, research and innovation useful to reach the goals of the EU Green Deal. It's a Brussels point of view. And before of this first uh, official speech, we are happy to give the, the floor to Stefano Francia, President of uh, AGIA. Please, Stefano, it's up to you. Well, good morning and welcome to AGIA CHIA within uh, AMA Digital. It's very important for us to participate in AMA in an active way. AMA is the largest exhibition of agricultural machinery in Italy and I think also in Europe. Well, this year we uh, we will have three events with three important titles um, Europe uh, Agriculture 4.0 and Internal Areas in Italy. All these are strategic areas uh, to us, especially now that we are hit by the COVID pandemic. We always like to talk about sustainability in relation to these three concepts economic and social sustainability. These are key words which actually drive everything that we support politically. This is a strategic because when one of these three words is missing, it's difficult to have a positive effect for the whole of the farming industry. We're going to have a very important day today. We'll be discussing agricultural machinery, digital farming and the European Green Deal. Mechanization has been a turn key in agriculture together with scientific research. Agricultural machinery within this large European project should play an essential, a key role. And within digital farming, we have to find the winning choices for farmers to make better decisions than in the past, to use less resources, thanks to the satellite technologies and all technologies that we have available. They can use less fertilizers and less plant protective agents. So we believe that these are keywords, that these are the guidelines for the coming years of the new European policy. We'll have a special focus on the Mediterranean area because it's strategic for our country, but not only because it was indicated as a good practice for food consumption and as well as social and economic context. What we need in the Mediterranean area is a different type of mechanization compared to other countries. So in these three events, we would like to be covering all these aspects. Of course, I've, I've 
spoken Italian because it's my mother tongue and I feel more comfortable. I'd like to thank all the speakers participating in these three events. I'd like to thank um, Alessandro Malavolti, President of Bunacoma. I'd like to thank Sergio and all those that made uh, today possible from all the cheer staff uh, and all the ladies and gentlemen that have cooperated. Uh, I wish you every success. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Stefano. Uh, as mentioned before, we start with a general picture of research and innovation useful to reach the goals of the EU Green Deal. The first uh, colleague is uh, uh, Doris Marquardt. Uh, she's uh, in, involved in the activity of the European Union. Is a member, she's a member of research and innovation team of DG Agri at the European level. And uh, Ms. Marquardt, please share your screen for your presentation and uh, it's up to you. Thank you. Buongiorno, everyone. Can you see my screen now? Not, not now. Um... Not yet. I can try it again. Oh, I get an error message that I can only use either. Can you upload the presentation which I sent? Okay, we try to upload the presentation for you. That would be perfect because um, I get the error message that I can only use my mic or my my screen. But um, in the meantime, I can maybe start to introduce myself. I'm Doris Marquardt from the European Commission. I'm working in the Unit B2, Research and Innovation. And I would like to look forward, thanks to the invitation today, and to present some impressions of the Green Deal and the implication for the agriculture sector and the opportunities digital technologies and innovation offer um, to reach the objectives of the Green Deal and the agriculture sector. Okay. I'm sorry, but we, we, we tried to, to share yeah. your presentation. If some colleague can try to share, because is there some problem? Sorry. All right. Thank you. If you click on share screen, Doris, yes, are you not? I said I did, but um, the, um, yeah. I get the error message that they can only um, share either the screen or audio. Oh, uh, great. Terrible. Try to do it. Doris, I think that you, you have to go in on with your speech, yes. but uh, we are not I able can... at the moment to. I, I will continue. So I suppose every one of you have heard of the, about the Green Deal from the European Commission. So the main ambition is to become climate neutral by 2050. That's a proposal by the Commission. And what we know, there are many sectors to contribute to, but the agriculture sector is a key player to achieve those objectives of the Green Deal. And um, instruments 
to make it more feasible how the agriculture sector and the agri-food sector in total can contribute to it is the so-called farm-to-fork strategy. The farm-to-fork strategy follows an integrated approach. What does it mean? So it achieves and fosters sustainable food systems, considering not only environmental aspects, but also... Okay. Uh, Doris, I'm sorry, we are uh, sharing your presentation. Can you see it? Per Perfect. Could we go okay. then to the third slide? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, very welcome. The farm to fork strategy, as you can see, and has three dimensions of sustainability, economic sustainability, social sustainability, and environmental sustainability. Next slide, please. So if we now look at the agri-food sector, we see that we have a lot of challenges, social challenges, for instance, not healthy diets, environmental challenges, but also economic sustainability, particularly from the perspective of the farmer. Next slide, please. So what is about the farm to fork strategy? What do we want to achieve? So it's about reducing the environmental and climate footprint, but also about the global transition towards sustainability and tap into new opportunities. Overall, we would like to achieve a resilient system. Next slide, please. And we directly can go to the next slide, please. The next, yeah. What is relevant for the farm to fork strategy that we have quantitative targets? They're not legally binding, but they are really measurable. So it should be achieved that we have a reduction by 50% of chemical pesticides, for instance, or we increase the organic area by 25% and also the fertilizer reduction by at least 50%. So that are quite tough objectives and measurable. Next slide, please. What is important? I just said those objectives are not legally binding. And if we would like to achieve those objectives mentioned, then we have to think about in a system approach. Several players have to contribute to it. Next slide, please. And we have a range of instruments, if you can see in the right corner, that's about legislation, but also financial incentives, education, research and innovation, and procurement. Next slide, please. So we have a range of concrete actions, and you can only read across them. So it's reaching from a revision of the sustainable use directives, embedding the objectives into the common agriculture policy, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. It also taps on concrete elements and actions which are already proposed, for instance, on feed additives, on organic action plan, and so on. Next slide, please. And this we can over jump, but it's important here that you see that also the consumer perspective is considered, not only the farmer's perspective, on the processor's perspective, but also the consumer's perspective. It's a holistic approach. Next slide, please. So now let's discuss what implications does the farm to fork strategy have for digitalization and also for innovation and the agriculture sector. Next slide, please. I indicated we have a range of possible instruments available. Next slide, please. And yes, now you please press further on, then I can speak in parallel because the slide is animated. We have to think about that the farm to fork strategy is embedded in the, a range of initiatives and policy programs at European level. It's not only the common agriculture policy and the Green Deal. We also have Horizon Europe, the Digital Euro program, and for instance, the ambition of an economy that works for all and left nobody behind. Next slide, please, Maria. Yeah. You, you have, can go further because the slide is animated. So there will come pop up all the... Yes, thank you. 
I think you, as with a farming perspective and the young farmers in particular, you are well aware of that digital technologies can help the farmers to work more precisely and efficiently, to increase the sector's competitiveness and the sustainability performance, make the jobs for farmers more attractive, to increase the transparency, for instance, with blockchain for the consumers, or, and most importantly, can support all types of farming, small ones, larger ones, organic ones. Next slide, please. This potential is also of digital technologies and innovation is also acknowledged in the proposal for the Common Agriculture Policy as so-called cross-cutting objective indicating that innovation and digitalization can help the farmers and other actors to achieve the other sustainability related objectives which you can see on this slide next slide please and further one slide more yes exactly so if you look at digitalization it is a key enabler to achieve the objectives and what is noteworthy here that digital technologies, the effectiveness strongly depends on data and data technologies, what we put into digital technologies is incisive. Next point, please. Yes, but I think you are well aware of that there are still challenges to really effectively deploy and use digital technologies and to roll it out to all farmers. So we have infrastructure bottlenecks like broadband, there's a lack of awareness among some farmers. We have problems with the cost effectiveness to invest in digital technologies. And also there's a lack of trust sometimes in the technologies, but also in the sharing of data. Next slide, please. So if you look back to our first objective, the farm to fork strategy to reduce pesticides, how can we achieve that with digital technologies? They can help to make it more efficient and reduce it to more precise applications, the use of pesticides. We still have one problem. We cannot exactly measure in how far um, the, quantitative, the quantitative is reduced through precision farming. Next slide, please. Yeah, you can go further to the next slide. And this slide, considering the time, we can go to the next one. So what are we thinking about in Brussels, as I was introduced at the beginning, um, how to achieve the objectives and overcome the challenges of digitalization? <coughs> so first of all, you know, we are very keen to strengthening broadband capacities. And there's also support for the development of digital skills. We at European level think it's very important to enabling the exchange of information and experience for sure also advisory services have to play a key role and facilitating investments next point please but also from the public side we think provision of data which can be fed into precision farming applications is quite important and also the facilitation of data sharing next slide please and finally, and that is the scope here, promoting targeted research and innovation is important. And what is here to be noted, we have privately funded research and innovation, but there are some gaps in private research, for instance, the focus on small farmers and their public funded research has to make a key contribution to. Next slide, please. So which role research and innovation has to play and becoming a digitalization of agriculture. So first of all, it's about increasing the cost effectiveness of digital solutions to enhance the possibilities for performance assessment opportunities. So the farmers would like to know what can I really achieve with digital technologies? What is the added value? How many costs can I save through the application of digital technologies? So research and innovation has to help to demonstrate this and to make it feasible to the farmers. And then finally, to develop technical solutions which can facilitate trust in data sharing. So make it not even that the farmer has to trust in a contract with the machinery provider, but there are technical solutions which facilitate data sharing in a trustworthy way. 
Next slide, please. So important aspects here are that research and innovation project have a demonstration effect so that they show the farmer what is out and we make the research results really feasible. And that research and innovation is need driven and the end user orientated. The end user here, for instance, the young farmer, what do you need that has to be reported back to Brussels and the national authorities who design the research and innovation programs? And Technical innovation in combination with business models and social innovation is quite important in designing research. Next slide, please. So, and finally, I would like to only call some attention to the forthcoming funding period post 2020. We cannot elaborate on all the elements here listed on the slide. So we will have the European Innovation Partnership um, in the forthcoming funding period. We will have Horizon Europe programming, research and innovation program, and there's a candidate partnership on agriculture of data. So really a large scale project fostering on data sharing and the use of data in agriculture. We have other large scale project with demonstration power under Horizon 2020. We have a, the planning a common use in agriculture data space. And I think this topic would require a whole presentation as such, but I say I only raise your interest in the subject. And there will be testing and experimentation um, facilities for artificial intelligence. Finally, most important here to really link end users with innovators in the countries and digital, uh, Italy is active here, are so-called digital innovation hubs, which link, for instance, um, IT experts with the farmer and the end user. And finally, there will be extended support for digital skills. And with that, I say thank you for your attention and I'm happy to address any questions. Okay, I stop the sharing. Great. Thank you, Ms. Marquardt. Uh, very, very useful your speech, very impressive and uh, many suggestions. And thank you also for the some ins inspiring ideas to, to work uh, in the next month and years. Uh, uh, quickly, we go to the next uh, speaker is Mr. Christian Gastaldi. Uh, it's a um, president of uh, Agia from uh, Liguria. It's up to you, Christian. Christian, can you, can you hear me? Hello, everyone. Ciao a tutti. Grazie. Please, it's up to you. Cristian, se vuoi far partire il tuo video oppure te lo facciamo partire noi? Sì, eh, dovrebbe partire, dovrebbe essere fatto partire da, da Enrico, se non sbaglio. Io non ce l'ho in questo momento. Ok, allora proviamo a condividere il video con tutti voi. Non so se riusciamo. Ok, lo state vedendo? Si sente, sì.
l'operazione di raccolta che viene fatta manualmente. Non eh, riusciamo a meccanizzare più del, dello spartitore elettrico, quello che è lo spartitore elettrico, eh, per quello che è la raccolta, come vedete. Il territorio è quello che è, non c'è possibilità di girare con i trattori e tutto viene fatto praticamente a mano. Come potete vedere i dislivelli sono importanti. <coughs> alla montagna dall'operosità dell'uomo e lavorare con questi dislivelli non è semplice se farlo come dicevo prima totalmente a mano però vi faccio vedere un po' del prodotto che facciamo è un prodotto che sicuramente delle olive stupende oliva patrimonio del Mediterraneo abbiamo assistito ad un cambio di meteorologia per quello che riguarda il nostro, il nostro clima e assistiamo sempre più spesso a fenomeni di tempeste, fenomeni di alluvioni e il nostro fragile territorio è spesso, molto spesso, eh, vittima. Non riusciamo, eh, soprattutto in questo periodo, ad arginare la forza della natura e la forza degli eventi climatici. È per questo che ci domandiamo e cerchiamo ogni giorno di trovare delle soluzioni valide a quella che può essere la lotta ai fenomeni climatici. Non so se lo potete notare, ma il mio spallo non si capisce benissimo la condizione. nel ponente Ligure, una piccola parte d'Italia che però resiste e tiene duro e soprattutto non vuole continuare a fare anche Passateci a trovare e grazie per l'attenzione. Ciao! Ok, Christian, some one of our friends uh... Uh, send us some messages about the quality of video um, um, probably there's some technical problem and if you can uh, share some suggestion with us uh, of your activity and uh, and about this video uh, we are happy okay um, mi diceva Enrico che posso parlare in italiano mi confermi dovrebbe esserci la traduzione sì Perfetto. Allora, niente, in questo video, in poche parole, eh, sono andato a spiegare eh, quello, che è le, quello che sono le fasi di raccolta nel, nel nostro territorio, che è un territorio prevalentemente montano, quindi dove è molto difficile meccanizzare ogni fase della raccolta ed ogni fase della, della gestione no? territoriale anche. E proprio per questo eh, nel video volevo far vedere tutto ciò che comporta fare agricoltura qui in Liguria, in particolare nel Ponente Ligure, che è una, una regione appunto affacciata sul mare, una regione costiera, ma molto con territori molto a picco sul mare, mo, con dislivelli molto importanti. E nel video, se avete notato, facciamo vedere come ogni fase della raccolta, ad esempio ora siamo in fase di raccolta, quindi il video è stato girato in questo momento, eh, come ogni fase viene fatta a mano e come il trasporto di ogni singola cassetta di olive, in questo caso, viene fatto manualmente. Quindi non, non c'è possibilità, o perlomeno 
non abbiamo ancora la meccanizzazione necessaria, giusta, per meccanizzare ogni fase della raccolta. Ok, really clear, thank you. And I think that our colleague from, from other languages can, can use the translation services. Uh, thank you, Christian. And we go quickly to the next speaker, Salvatore Borruto, uh, Agia Delegate of, at uh, Seja. Uh, he speaks us of olive and uh, citrus growing in the Calabrian inland areas. Please, uh, Salvatore, it's up to you. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have uh, a short presentation video uh, of uh, uh, of my my farm, and uh, it's possible to to go to. Lo 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 manda la regia direttamente oppure. Eh, avremo probabilmente problemi di, di, di audio, cerchiamo di, di risolverli ah, velocemente. Va bene. Io, come dicevi prima, produco olio d'oliva e bergamotto in Calabria, nelle aree interne, un po' come Christian, eh, quindi ho voluto raccontare un pochettino quello che è eh, la realtà in cui operiamo, le difficoltà legate alla meccanizzazione agricola. Eh, le difficoltà legate a, insomma, a fare aziende in questi luoghi che in questo momento si sono rilevati utili rispetto alla pandemia, rispetto a quello che sta succedendo e quindi bisogna ripensare in modo sociologico e anche dal punto di vista eh, agricolo queste aree per cercare di liberare degli spazi come poi racconterò nel video. Perfetto, provo a condividere Condivido lo schermo con voi. non lo vediamo in questo momento Non si vede lo schermo condiviso. Proviamo. Potete vederlo? Sì, adesso sì. È partito adesso.
Insomma, l'audio si sente malissimo. Comunque vi racconto un attimino, farò da, da, da traduttore di me stesso, da doppiatore. Eh, è stato un, un viaggio nella mia azienda, nei luoghi, nei terreni della mia azienda agricola, come potete vedere. Sono di Reggio Calabria, vivo sullo stretto di Messina. E ho voluto proprio raccontare quello che era eh, un attimino il mio, il mio mondo, dove vivo, dove opero, e quello che è stato anche la pandemia per questi luoghi. Come vedete sono delle aree impervie interne. Senza fuoristrada non ci arrivo, quindi... Probabilmente eh, ho dei mezzi cingolati con cui mi posso muovere, però negli ultimi anni sto utilizzando delle tecniche innovative, come la semina sul sodo, cerco di sfalciare solamente gli ulivedi per non creare del dissesto idrogeologico. Insomma, c'è tutta questa attenzione che è legata all'attenzione alla cura del paesaggio, alla tradizione e all'innovazione. E eh, un attimino anche all'attenzione all per le aree interne. Io sono il delegato eh, al SEGA per l'Aggia e da diverso tempo... Queste istanze vengono portate da me e dai miei colleghi sui tavoli europei, perché raccontare un attimino l'agricoltura dell'area del, del Mediterraneo è un po' come raccontare le radici di quello che è l'agricoltura. Quindi credo che mh, il video, che anche se non si sente l'audio in cui di fatto raccontavo queste cose, e eh, eh, volevo un po' farvi fare un viaggio in queste aree, perché, per cercare di porre l'attenzione sul tema della meccanizzazione di queste aree impervie e interne. Eh, qua siamo alle vendici della Spomonte, e quindi... Eh, credo che lavorare da delle terre che sono state della Magna Grecia, lavorarle oggi sia un onore per me e un onore insomma condividerle con voi su, con questa vetrina. Eh, chiudo con una citazione, dice, una citazione del filosofo eh, Ralph Waldo Emerson, che dice che il primo uomo della terra è stato un agricoltore, quindi ogni nobiltà storica deve ricadere e rimanere sull'agricoltura. Grazie. Ok. Thank you, thank you, Salvatore. And we are um, moving to the next speaker. If uh, you can manage the connection of uh, Anna Gerse coming from the Netherlands uh, in representation of Najik Association. And we have also a video, but probably we have the same problem with audio. And uh, We are not seeing Anna connected at the moment. Okay, we can try to help Anna to, to manage the, the web portal. I asked to the technical service, is there any help to, to reach Anna Gerse from the Netherlands. Anna, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Will you start the video? Okay, or? Anna, it's up to you. Uh, we have some problem with the uh, audio of the video and uh, we can show it, but there's uh, some friends that can hear the, the audios, your, your speech, the audio of the video. Yeah. You can try to yeah. share your video. Maybe but you can also tell it. Yeah. And uh, I share the video, but you can mm, talk on the, on the, on the images. Yeah, I'll do the voice over. <laughs> so this is in our barn. Uh, here I'm saying that um, I'm from an area in the Netherlands which is made for farming. We are on the bottom of the sea. Um, 50 years ago, they built a dike around the area where we live and they pumped the water out. So we actually farm on the bottom of the sea. It's very interesting. Um, and because of that, we uh, have basically all squared uh, fields. It's ideal for farming. Um, 
we have GPSs on, on our tractors. We uh, do a lot of mechanization ourselves. We do all the planting and harvesting uh, ourselves, including maintenance, which is generally done uh, in the land by a custom farmer. Um, we farm around 120, 230 hectares. We have a big variety of crops. It's all organic. Um, we, for example, have onions, carrots, maize. And uh, what I'm showing here is one of my favorite machines. It's our hoeing machine. Um, as you can see, the, the gap between the knives in the hoeing machine is very uh, tight. Um, the, for most crops, our row spacing is 25 centimeters. And the knives in there are 20 centimeters. So there's only a distance from two and a half centimeter from the knife <coughs> to the crop. Um, and thanks to GPS on both the machine and the tractor, we can uh, really make sure that we get most of the weeds with this machine instead of uh, picking it by hand. So it saves us a lot of man hours. Uh, I think that's one of the most interesting machines on our farm because uh, it's very specific for organic, but also it's very specialized in uh, weed reduction. I think I'm showing a bit, a bit, a bit more of the farm later on in the video. Yeah, this is outside. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I I stopped the sharing of, of your video. Okay, and if I can, I, I would like to have uh, uh, some idea from your opinion uh, of the um, the role about uh, organic farming and uh, uh, digitalization and uh, agricultural mechanization. What's your opinion on it in your country? Yeah, I think here in the Netherlands. Um, the most important role of organic farming is that it's more innovative and uh, there's a there's a high incentive for making sure there uh, you have very few man hours in the field because those are extremely expensive also because of high minimum wages in the Netherlands. So I think what the organic sector does is really uh, go into a lot of innovation in terms of cameras and uh, sensors to really make sure that all of the weed reduction is done well with machines. And I think that's especially important for organic. But you can also see it in, for example, the development of a phytophthora resistant potato, which is of course not organization, but it's a similar development. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Anna. And uh, I would like to know if uh, Simon Vanke is uh, available for the the speech, or if you have only video. We see Anna at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was removed. Okay. Yeah. We are waiting for Simon. Okay. There's no Simon online. And we can try to, to show the, the video of uh, Simon activity. Or we can go on on the next speaker. Uh, Mr. Alessandro Malavolti. I stopped the sharing of my video. Okay, if uh, Alessandro Malavolti is uh, ready to start, we are ready. If someone from the technical Department, we can try to connect Mr. Alessandro Malavolti from Federal Lacoma. Okay, and uh, at the moment, if uh, Yannis Maes, uh, President of CEJA, can start to the connection with, with us. We move uh, forward to the 
end of this meeting and the conclusions that the Yannes tried to Yannes, can you please Okay, someone can help Mr. Yannes Maes uh, to connect to the, the screen with us. Okay, great Yannes, welcome, <laughs> you are here. Okay, I asked to you if, uh, if, we, we, if you want, of course, uh, uh, try to, to give us some suggestion at the end of this uh, meeting and uh, we would like to, to try to, to describe the scenarios uh, that you can uh, catch from the from these uh, speakers. And it's so interesting, I think, that uh, the first picture gave us uh, from uh, Doris Marquardt uh, about the Green Deal and the possibility for the me agricultural mechanization, digitalization, and uh, um, I ask you, it's a personal question on <laughs> this. Uh, during this speech, Doris uh, talked about the solution able to facilitate trust in data sharing. I think, I think that it's a very important issue. And uh, I ask your opinion as a president of uh, Seja. Please, the, the stage is for you. Yes, uh, well, thank you. And, and let me first uh, also thank uh, Aja and, and the AIMA Fair uh, for organizing this and, and, and getting so many people involved, uh, both uh, in Italy and, and, and across Europe. It is a topic which uh, goes to the heart of, uh, of young farmers because, um, well, whether it is for, for uh, achieving some of the objectives behind the European Green Deal or whether it is to, to uh, increase our efficiency at farm level, increase our effectiveness uh, uh, farming methods, um, digitalization and technological innovation um, are crucial. Uh, and so in that sense, it's really good to have this debate uh, right now and the chance to see some different stories from, uh, from across um, Europe. Um, to, uh, to, to come back on, on, on the question of, of uh, um, how we see the, the importance of, of data sharing, well, as CISA, together with uh, our partners at the uh, Copa Cogeca, which is the senior farm organization, where, for example, uh, also Chia is, uh, uh, is active, we have signed a code of conduct for data sharing in agriculture, uh, a code of conduct that we have made as farmer organizations, together with the, the Association for Agricultural Machinery, for example, uh, and other partners in that chain, uh, because it is so crucial that when we are using data and, and the use of data is the future, let's, let, let us be clear about that, data is the future and it can also help us forward. In order for data to be useful for a farmer uh, uh, in their own practice, it needs to be shared. My data on my own farm is not, is not giving me a lot of uh, information if I cannot reflect on the same data on a, colleague, uh, on a colleague's farm, if I cannot use that data in a streamline across the, the food chain, if I cannot uh, express that, that information towards consumers um, at the end. So we need to share our data, but in order to share it, we need to be sure that it cannot be used against us. And for that, it is crucial that farmers throughout the, the food chain, that farmers throughout the, the, um, um, the development of new technologies remain the real owners of information which is gathered from their farm, whether it is information uh, about soil quality, whether it is information about the quality of, 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 of our final product, whether it is information about uh, the, the, the period of peaks of production and so on, that is all very useful but we need to be ensured that we remain the, the real owners of that data and that nothing can happen without uh, our consent uh, in it. Yeah. If I maybe, I'll, I'll just continue on, on a few yeah. reflections yeah. That, I, that I made from um, uh, from the, uh, the the past hour, uh, well, maybe the, the the biggest reflection of all, we have seen some some technical difficulties, which we see everywhere when we are working with technology. Uh, it showcased the need to improve that uh, because people will only be able to trust on technology, will only be willing to to implement it 
uh, if they can rely on it. And, and, and well, today has shown us that sometimes technology fails and that brings problems towards what we want to achieve, whether it is this debate uh, with, with people from across Europe or whether it is uh, in, in my own farm uh, having heat detection uh, or, or at activity measurements on the cows uh, uh, to see whether, whether they are sick or in heat or, or whatever. So, so being able to rely on the quality of technology is, is, is crucial in order to make it a success story. Uh, because technology and, and innovation in general can bring a lot. The, uh, the issue I would say that we have to bring forward as young farmers across Europe day after day after day is to make sure that innovation, that everybody understands that innovation is, is research development, very important, but that is only successful if there is also implementation at the farm. So if farmers are able to buy it so that it is affordable for farmers, if farmers are able to use it so it is easy to use, the quality is good. If farmers want to use it, so again, coming back to the, to the issue of trust, my, my phone, and I think for, for all the young farmers who are online at this moment, my phone is by far my most used tool on the farm. Well, together with my computer, probably. Where, where I also still use a pitchfork when it's needed, but my phone, this is where, where I keep the management. This is where I, where I keep in contact with, uh, with, with my trading partners. This is where I do most of the work. My mother refuses to do payments via her phone because she doesn't trust the system. So trust is crucial to the system. I can only be, be provided with, with, with the advantages of what technology can offer if I am willing to, to trust into what that system does into um, what the benefit uh, will be for us. So, so in, in that case, governments and private partners have a big role to play in ensuring that whatever is provided to the farmers in terms of technology is also, um, uh, is also trustworthy. The second element uh, to, to reflect on, uh, and we have seen some, some diverse images. Eh? We saw olives in Italy, uh, we saw common crops in, uh, in the Netherlands, um, those farmers have, uh, so, so, so uh, Hannah and Christian, they have different uh, realities. Their, their farming activity, they are both farmers, they are both colleagues, and I'm sure they would reflect on that in the same way, but their reality is different. And so innovation and technology needs to be able to provide an answer to both of their realities. So there is no one fits all solution. Every farmer has their own reality, has their own uh, ambition, has their own dreams, and technology has to play into the single diversity of ambitions which is out there. Um, and so we have to make sure that, that wherever you are farming in Europe, whether it is on, on, on a large scale farm in, in, in Scandinavian countries or on a small scale farm in, in, in the south of Italy, in, in a mountainous region, that you are able to be provided with, uh, uh, with technological solutions to, uh, to move forward throughout uh, the coming years. Yeah. Yannis, um, I, I would like to, to know from, from your point of view, from, from our opinion, which kind of uh, role uh, you can draw for the CEJA inside the Green Deal program uh, in the next month? Which your opinion of the role of your association in the Green Deal? No. Uh, I'm sure well, that you have a clear idea of it. <laughs> Let me start by saying that the, uh, the objectives behind the Green Deal, which are the sustainable development goals made by, by the United Nations, are, are, are the crucial part of our future. That there, are, there are challenges which our globe is facing, and climate change is one, poverty is one, global hunger is one. There are 17 big challenges for, for uh, global society, and we need to act on them. Also, as agricultural sector, we have a role to play there. Now, the, the, there are two very important points behind those uh, sustainable development goals. One is they are equally important. So making sure that farming communities can earn a decent income is equally important as making sure that we uh, find a solution for the climate crisis. There is no one is more important than the other. We have to get it all together. And secondly, whatever we do, we need to do it in a way that nobody is left behind. And those are the two most crucial elements. In essence, that means that the European Green Deal, 
uh, is something that we need to be uh, uh, supportive of in, in the overall ambition, but it's something we have to be very crucially looking into in how it is going to be implemented. Because a green deal, which is not providing economic perspective to the farming sector, is not a green deal. A green deal, which is, which is going to be built on ideological ideas rather than pragmatic progress, is not a green deal. And so uh, what is happening in the coming month is not as much the Green Deal, is the common agricultural policy. And also via that common agricultural policy, we, we need to enable ourselves to increase our environmental performance, to increase our economic resilience, to, to build stronger uh, communities. Um, but again, that policy needs to, needs to be there for farmers in the first place and make sure that every farmer whether it is uh, Hannah in the Netherlands or whether it is uh, Christian in, uh, in Italy, that every farmer is provided with the right tools to do so and to create an income uh, while doing so. Yeah, yes, yes, it's, it's okay. And it's great, your, um, your point of view. It's really, really suggestive. Okay, we are at the end of this uh, event and thank you all, of course. Thank you at uh, AGIA for the organization of this meeting and uh, the high level of all speaker, it's uh, representative of the quality of the work of the young farmers in the Europe, and we are ready for the next challenges. I think that the Green Deal is the train that is coming, and we have to be able to jump on it uh, quickly, but the young farmers are able to do it, <laughs> are enough agile to, to do this action. Uh, okay, we are waiting for uh, some other, uh, events, uh, probably by person, it's better, and in Italy too. Uh, stay safe and uh, thank you everybody, goodbye. Bye-bye. Grazie, ciao. Grazie, ciao.